You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. <laughs> Hey guys, you're listening to Smooth Operator Radio with your hosts, Mr. Paul and Rob, who can help you get the buttery smooth footage that you're trying to get with your drone. Take it away, boys. <laughs> well, if nothing else, that was a lot of fun. And uh, I appreciate when you surprise me with these things, Paul. It's uh, the most interesting intro we've ever done. But anyway, guys, welcome to another awesome episode of Ask a Drone You. Uh, my name is Paul. That's uh, my first personality, and you just got a hold of my second one. No, I'm kidding. Smooth, Paul. Smooth Anyways. operator. And I'm Rob. Smooth or not, smooth-headed. And this is episode 672. And like always, we are really, really grateful that you're spending a few minutes of your day with us. Appreciate it every single time. This is no exception. And Paul, when we heard this question, when we listened to this question... I like when this happens a lot, guys. So I play a question. Paul says, yeah, I'm not really not really feeling that. Or, Hell no. That needs to, yeah, that would be good for video. And then he just starts talking <laughs> with basically what would have been a good podcast if we would have been recording it. <laughs> so then I write it down and we do the podcast. Anyways, that happens every now and then. And I think this is one of those questions. But uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out with us. So this is one of those questions that I just ended up spouting off. And you're like, okay, we're doing that one. Yeah, just repeat. Rinse and repeat. And I think that'd be helpful to folks. It's funny. I think Rob gets more of an earful of drone knowledge than like everyone would just love to be in here like pre-podcast. Maybe we yeah, should just do like true. a drone you community live stream in here. <laughs> and unfortunately goes in one ear and out the other. <laughs> Poor guys. Anyway, well guys, welcome to another show. Today's question is brought to you by our friends at videoblocks.com. Make sure you check out videoblocks.com. If you ever run to a shoot and it starts to rain and you're like, oh no, what am I going to do? Well, you can still get that nice B-roll. The segue footage transitions, motion graphics, and copyright free audio from our friends at videoblocks.com forward slash drone. That way, that rainstorm won't ruin your day. Also, a special thank you to our friends at coloradodronechargers.com. If you're looking for a quad charger for your drone, make sure to check out coloradodronechargers.com and use discount code DRONEU8. Because if you're like me and you're flying a lot, chances are you need one of those. I actually want to get a new one uh, for this unique because mm. there is no good way to charge those unique batteries right now because it takes like an hour and 15 minutes to charge one battery from, wow. from empty to full. So they do have one for the unique? I'm talking to John right now about that. Um, I think that they have something, but I am working on it with them. Cool. And if they don't have something now, hopefully they'll have something soon. But if you're flying any of the DJI series stuff or even a solo, if you're rocking sight scan and you need to charge those batteries because they only last about seven minutes, then you're definitely going to need a quad <laughs> charger from Colorado Drone Chargers. So make sure to check them out. But Rob, why don't you go ahead and play that question? Hey, Paul and Rob, what's going on? This is Bill from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Uh, I got a question about precision flying. Uh, Paul, I know you've mentioned several times that um, – you really like to go for those uh, wow shots flying through a fence or things like that. Um, what is the best way to practice flying in precision environments, flying through uh, very narrow obstacles, that kind of stuff without just, you know, trashing a $1,200 drone. Uh, the last thing I want to do is go uh, fly my drone through a fence and um, tear it up, crash it, destroy it, and then be out the money for it without having uh even earned anything off of that. So uh, what, what's the best way to practice that skill in a safe environment where you're not going to damage the drone so that when those paying shoots come up where it really could pay off, you're fully confident and ready to do it. Thanks. Mm-hmm. The million dollar question, Paul. How do you get good at flights, practicing the difficult moves, but maintaining all of your equipment in perfect condition? 
Yeah, I got to say, there is a clear step here. Sorry, I was pulling up some gates because if you are using gates to practice your precision flying, um, then it, you're going to break a prop or two, but you're not going to have any serious breakage. First of all, you should not practice precision flying with a Mavic Pro. I know some of this footage that you're about to see where we're flying through fences is actually with the Mavic Pro. I also did it with a Phantom. Um, but I will say there's a couple things mentally that you've got to overcome before you even practice, Rob. Step number one, you can't be afraid. Right. That's literally... which, which includes afraid of crashing. Correct. Crashing, ruining your drone. Correct. That possibility exists. Step number two, uh, while you're not afraid of crashing, you can't be afraid to lose the drone and you can't be afraid. How do I say this? If you can't afford to crash the drone, you can't afford to do this practice. And whether that's a mental issue, because let's be honest, like, you know, a lot of people say, well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm low on funds, I'm restricted, I have these issues. You shouldn't be doing the tricky maneuvers if you, one, don't have the mentality of, I can't think about crashing. Um, number two, if you can't afford to crash the drone. And number three, you cannot think about what if. If you think about what if, you're going to crash, you're going to have a problem. But let's talk about the practical aspects of this because I don't want to get into the financial stuff. I've crashed drones and had to figure out a way to make the money to get a new one before. That, that was a realization of getting started in 2012. Mm -hmm. So I've had to go through that. Um, so people, trust me, I've been there. I understand there are alternatives to figure it out. And GoFundMe is a great thing. Um, which I've never used, but I'm just saying it's a great thing. Um, now the practical aspects of this, uh, drone, you has this course called drills and practice exercises, which is eight exercises that you do line of sight. And then you do FPV and you do them once in one flight mode. And then again, in another flight mode, they are so important to really understand the basics and the fundamentals of flight, because if you don't have a solid fundamentals, you can't do anything else well. Right. Yeah. If you like, for example, if you if you drive like Rob and you wait until your tires are almost bald, you can't be taking corners at 50 miles an hour because you're going to 45 flip your truck. It's OK. Or drive down In the, the road with one of the tires deflated and going. <laughs> 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 I got from point A to point B. You sure did. And it was a great Instagram video. <laughs> so, uh -huh. <laughs> but what I mean is like if you don't have the maintenance set up to do tire rotations and balances every couple months, or if you're like me, every few weeks, then your tires aren't going to last that long and you're not going to have the right machine to do those fast turns. And what do I mean with drones? I mean, replacing your props all the time, um, doing your IMU calibrations often, doing your compass calibrations often, uh, doing lots of practice with uh, inverted orientation and doing the drills and exercises. That's really important. But now the practical aspects of learning to fly through obstacles. Number one, Get some gates. They're really, really helpful. Um, PremierRC.com is where we get our gates, and they are extremely useful, extremely helpful. Um, number two, uh, when you practice with these gates, get bigger gates and move into smaller gates. So they have 10 by threes, 10 by fours, then they have three by fives, so just slowly move into them. But when you're actually going through these gates, you need to pick your line and once you pick your line, you need to go for it. You, you need to make the smallest movements possible and really the smallest movements possible. The hover test in the drills and exercise courses on DroneU is probably by far the most important for understanding just how small your movements need to be. And when you do it in FPV flight modes, meaning you're watching through the screen the entire time, you're not doing it line of sight, you really understand how smooth and how small those motions need to be. So mm -hmm. practical uh, aspects of doing this, number one, we are doing good fundamentals of flight, understanding inverted orientation, understanding the smallest movements possible, and understanding just basic line of sight flying versus FPV flying. Then we're getting gates and we move from large to small, slowly moving through them, doing it on less windy days, and then doing it on windy days, um, while also understanding that we've got to pick our line and stick with that line and not doing abrasive or big movements on the sticks when we go through the gates. Right. How do you know that you've gone through the gate? Watch the shadow go over the drone once you've gone through the gate. Now, 
if you're flying these line of sight, which if you're flying a quadcopter like a Phantom and you're not flying a racing drone, then most likely you're doing it line of sight. If you're flying it with a racing drone, you're probably doing it FPV. And honestly, you can learn either way. It's just about training yourself to learn both ways. Sean Taylor, our Night Fury uh, racer. That's Night Fury as a racer. Um, he has an FPV racing class here at DroneU, which is awesome and teaches you all about FPV racing. But try to get him to fly line of sight, and it's like watching me trying to fly a racing drone. <laughs> it's uh, very interesting, actually. Yes. But you can train yourself to fly FPV and line of sight, and that's yeah. how you become the best pilot possible, right. which is why the drills and exercise course is set up the way it is. Indeed. So, okay. So a couple things. <laughs> all great stuff, all great advice. A couple things that I would say if I were... In your shoes, um, Bill, and, and trying to, to just become better and more proficient at flying more technically, number one, I'd probably start with a drone that doesn't cost 1500 bucks. And obviously, it's relative. If 1500 bucks doesn't matter to Why you, Why not then start with the Phantom 3? It's Phantom 3 or even a Phantom 2. $499. Yeah, I mean, you can, which is still a lot of money, and I don't want to make light of even five or $600. Again, it's relative, and that's a lot of money to a lot of people, and, and we don't take that lightly. But it's less than 1500 I think number two is it's a matter, and this is true in no matter what you're doing, if it's my daughter playing volleyball or whatever, me flying drones or you flying drones, you're building your confidence slowly. And it's that deliberate practice that we've talked about over and over and doing things the right way and just slowly making whatever obstacles you're working with smaller and smaller and smaller to the point where you feel like you're ready to go try that fence or through those trees on that um, on that house job or whatever it is, you're going to start to push yourself and you'll just know. I mean, you'll start to get more and more comfortable as that learning curve starts to even out. So it's just little by little by little. Be patient with yourself. I mean, I would say that because I think just uh, not to get all philosophizing on us, but philosophizing. The society just wants us to rush, 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 right? That's kind of the nature of how we live nowadays. But take your time. And, you know, obviously that's relative to how many hours you can spend a day flying. So True. for you, that could be two weeks. For somebody else, that could be two years. Um, be patient with yourself and allow yourself to get comfortable with each incremental step up in complexity, and you'll be fine. Yeah, I agree with that. That's actually something that's really important to know because a lot of people do just get really, really excited and try and get into this. Mm -hmm. But it's also a good lesson to learn when you crash because you learn that if True. you take too much risk versus your skill level, how much trouble you can get and how quickly. But I also, that's why I recommended those gates because you can hit those gates at as fast as you can go in a Phantom and the only thing that's going to happen is you're going to break a prop. Yeah, and yeah, and one thing I might even um, articulate here is that I would go so far as to say if you don't crash at some point you probably aren't pushing yourself enough right i mean that's not necessarily true and i know people would push no, back on that no i think that, that that's actually a good point and people have pushed back on that with me but the only way i've gotten to where i am is by pushing the edge but you definitely you can't push too much it's definitely a fine line like you say it is it is and and you'll you're the only one that can kind of feel that for yourself but i know at the fly in this past july um, a lot of great pilots were were busting their butts on those drones, and they were crashing into these gates left and right. And it was because awesome they were pushing it, and it was so much fun. And by the way, I don't think a single one of those drones, short of one Inspire Two, if I remember right, right, uh, I think it was Armando's Inspire Two, if I remember right. Um, every other drone that hit something flew this within the same weekend. And they, it looked like they'd crashed pretty hard. And he got a new drone, I think it was like three weeks later. Yeah. And it was because he had care refresh, but... Correct, yeah. But although I say that, and John Clark, one of our other pilots, has been having a lot of issues with care refresh. Yeah, we, we hear definitely um, varying reports on that, some good and some not so good. But, but the point is, a lot of people crashed because they were pushing the envelope, and I literally don't... I can't think of one other than Armando's Inspire 2, which is another issue... Um, that wasn't able to fly that same weekend. Yeah, new no, props, whatever. It was. Uh, yeah, I can't remember either. And I even crashed my Inspire two trying to Hard. go through the gates. Well, I don't know about the. I didn't see the Inspire two, but I saw you fly. I think it was one of the uh, one, of, maybe just the Phantom four. 
and you crashed that thing hard into the gate. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny because TJ was trying to film it on the backside, and he was like, you blew through that turn, man. I didn't know if you were going to make it back in there. <laughs> it, was like, it was like, well, when you're trying to win and you've yeah. got, your students have become so good that you really have to push the envelope yeah. further and further and further. <laughs> Which is another great point is that the reason you were flying so hard is because students were pushing you to do so. Oh, yeah. Because they were getting so good. Oh, yeah. John McBride's time was like 24 seconds. I got mine down. I think it was like twenty three, and I was just so stoked that I got I beat John McBride because I I feel like I, I got my thunder back, you know, like rah. <laughs> and then and then I lost to uh, <laughs> one of my students. And really, the reason was actually um, he not only took it as I have to, you know, I talk about picking your line. I've got to pick my line, just like if you're picking your line in, when you're hitting the apex of a turn in a car. But you also have to be really careful about how you hit those turns mm -hmm. because the reason he won is he didn't blow out the turns on the figure eight of the race course. Yeah. He took them really, really, he really He was very sharp. strategic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, and then again, if you try to do like the, as they call it, the drone you turn where you go in super hard, flick the sticks and do pretty much a 180. Mm -hmm. The thing is, is that when you do that, your motor rotation goes from like 7,000 RPMs to 500 and then back up to 7,000. And I know it doesn't sound like a lot of time, but that time that it takes mm -hmm. for those motors to rewind back up is essentially the reason that I lost the race. Yeah, <laughs> so. it's, it's a more efficient. And I hear Sean talk about this when it comes to racing. The strategic element involved in racing is... I would say significantly more than just say your your balls, if you will, like your willingness to go all out, mm -hmm. because he's Those talked Georgia about pecans aren't going to cut it. That's right, exactly. But he's talked about how he can just follow someone and follow their line, and stay right with them, and then all he has to do is find a better line, and he'll go right by him. Yeah, strategy. He's he's crazy. He's crazy good. Yes. Like, yeah. If you haven't checked out, that's another class on Drone U that you get for being a Drone U member. So, in fact, I reached out to Sean Taylor recently because I wanted to talk to him um, uh, about some things. But you know, one thing is you got to have fun when you do this. Like, we're sitting here, True. we're having so much fun talking about this. And uh, if you want to get involved in the race, by the way, um, the drone you fly in next year is being planned right now, and we're actually not that far away. If you think about it, Rob. November, December, January, February, March, April, May. Okay, we're nine months away. <laughs> but, so, but it'll be here fast, I true. assure that's you. That's like the same time it would take As far to as we're concerned, it's like tomorrow. Yeah. Feels like it. That is true. And I'll say, like, I think we should up the bounty on the obstacle course. I think we should make it a little bit more complicated. I think that it should be a higher price point, whatever you win. And um, there should be some sort of king of the castle crown. Absolutely. I'm just saying. No, that's fun. It is so much People fun. People dig it. You guys have got to check it out. But anyway, that is going to do it for us today. If you have a question, go to astronew.com. And if you love this show and you want to support it, check out all the classes at thedroneu.com. Again, that's thedroneu.com. I promise you're going to like it if you like the show. So check it out. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Drone You. Drone <laughs> You.